winter in Luxembourg can be cold, like below zero cold, and normal people would escape to a warmer destination. But not me. Nope. I went for Scandinavia. Bergen in Norway, to be precise. After all, nothing screams more Christmas than snow and cold. Of course, I took track of the pictures when I was there, and once I got back home, I started sorting everything out and editing them, and while doing so, I noticed a trend, which made me start thinking about the difference between making and taking a picture. And this is what I would like to explore with you in today's video. I'm a translator by trade. I studied foreign languages and linguistics at high school and university, and this was the first form of communication that I approached before photography. I've always been fascinated by how fluid English is as a language. For instance, you can say either making a picture or taking a picture. But what's the difference? I know that it might sound like a nuisance to most people, but for a linguist, and especially for a photographer, there is definitely a big difference between the two terms. I perceive take a picture as more of an aggressive action. You pass by something you like and you grab it just the way it is. You are not putting too much effort into the composition or the camera settings or the individual elements that are going to be included in your shot. You just capture whatever catches your attention in a specific moment. It's, it's more of a passive action in terms of creativity. When we talk about making a picture, on the other hand, we're referring to something that is intentional and mindful. There is premeditation in everything you do. You visualize something that you like and you know how you want it to look like in the picture and you act accordingly. So you know which elements should be included or excluded from your shot where they should be positioned and how they should be captured so you already know what your camera settings are going to be. Everything in your shot has a purpose, from the composition to the time to the light. And we are talking about an active creation here and I believe that the key word is really intent. But Let's go into something more practical and I would like to show you the pictures that triggered all of this train of thoughts. Let's start from this one. This is a very simple shot of a phone booth turned into library on one street by the harbour. There is not much happening here apart from the color of the phone booth in contrast with the cold colors of the background and the sky. If I must be honest, this is a very lazy shot for me. I stopped and took a picture of what was in front of me just because it caught my attention. There is really no element in here that would make it interesting. But let's move to this shot instead. I mean, you can see the difference, right? This is the exact same phone booth. All I did was just walk around the phone booth and wait on the other side for someone to walk by and be visible from the window. And I believe it's a completely different feeling. You have a completely different point of view on the street where this phone booth was on and on what is happening on that street. I decided to add the human element to make it more interesting and also a bit moodier because it was fairly early in the morning and having just this one person with no one else visible in the shot, it makes it feel more melancholic in my opinion. And because there is really no color to play here, we don't have the strong red that is on the outside of the phone booth, I had to play with highlights and lowlights to create um, some depth and interest in the shot. 
I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out in the end. Another example taken on the same street is this one. I did like this row of buildings because of the colors alternating and because every single building is crooked in a different way. These houses are very old and made out of wood and they're standing right in front of the sea so it's normal that they're kind of rottening and they're not sitting straight anymore. So I was walking by, I saw them and I just took a picture. But again, there is not much going on. Um, this is something that caught my attention and nothing else. This shot is different and it has a different feeling to it. Just by being at street level, I managed to include this puddle of water in the shot where part of the buildings are reflecting in and I do like how it looks because the water is still and the reflection of the buildings has very sharp and straight lines just like the buildings in real life. It's a nice continuum. Plus, there are some reflections of the lights from the street and from the windows and it's just a different feeling. It's You still manage to see how crooked the buildings are, but it's not just about the buildings, it's about how the buildings are incorporated with the lights and the cars on the street and, and it's definitely more thought through. The last example is still a street with buildings, but in a different part of the city and in a different part of the day. This one, just like the third picture that I showed you, is a classic example of tourist picture. Buildings on the street. There is really not much happening here. It's interesting for me because it looks different from the type of architecture that I'm used to. But apart from that, there is really not much happening. But again, a few adjustments make a huge difference, as you can see in this second shot. In here, I moved away from the center of the street and just got to a corner. I changed the depth of field and I lowered, I was not standing anymore. You still can see the very same street but from a different perspective and with an added element of interest in it. As you can see it's so very simple to completely transform your shot. It's normal to be attracted by the plain shot as you're walking by something but as you saw it doesn't take much just walk away a few steps, try and change the angle of the camera or the depth of field or try to exclude certain elements and your shots are going to be so much different and personal and this all goes into building your personal style and your personal identity as a creator as well. It's a very simple way to transform your images and add that element of creativity to make them stand out even more. Thank you for sticking around till the end. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you around next time. Bye bye!